Get ready to find your recipe for success from America's top business owners here at Onward Nation with your host, Stephen Wessner. Good morning, I'm Stephen Wessner and welcome to episode 482 of Onward Nation, where five days a week, I interview one of today's top business owners so we can learn their recipe for success, how they built and scaled their business. In fact, our 12 Success Strategies ebook is a compilation of the best business building advice shared by our guests. Just text the word onward to the number 66866. Again, text the word onward to the number 66866, and we will send it right to your inbox. Now let's welcome today's guest, Moran Pober. Moran is the founder of ABD Assets and a former soldier in the IDF, which is Israel Defense Forces. Moran has had extensive dealings with many entrepreneurial projects. He founded iTips, a top 100 app in 100 stores around the world, in the App Store, including in the United States, Canada, and the UK. He's carried out extensive consulting assignments with many companies, and his current company seeks to acquire equity stakes in companies with growth prospects, with a view to assisting them developing managerially and strategically. Welcome to Onward Nation, Moran. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to have you here. I'm so thrilled that you accepted our invitation and really stoked too that I'm here in the US and Wisconsin, you're in Tel Aviv and this is just, you know, we're crossing so many time zones. Thank you for sharing your your evening with me and Onward Nation is just very, very kind of you. But, you know, even with that impressive bio and, and really the exciting experiences that you've had in this entrepreneurial path and journey, it is still just a very, very thin slice into you as a business person, an entrepreneur. And so take us behind the green curtain. Tell us more about you and your path and your journey, and then we'll dive in with the questions. Yeah, so um, pretty straightforward. Um, like you mentioned, I went to the Army. Every Israeli man got to go to the Army when he's 18. So I've been in the Army uh, from 18 to 21. And after that, I basically realized that there's no way that I could work for anyone. I mean, I tried to work as a bartender for a while, but then I, I got <laughs> fired and I pretty much realized no way. There's no chance I could do that. And um, I remember I, I started traveling around the world a little bit after the army and I met, um, I met this guy who was really successful in business. And that's what led me to the world of business. I started a few businesses from scratch and uh, one of them eventually became really successful. I actually got offered to to be acquired and I didn't accept that offer. And back then I didn't realize, but now when I'm looking back, I'm, I think that I learned one of the biggest lessons uh, in my life maybe. And it's the fact that when you have a business, the best time to probably sell it is now, no matter what. If you're successful, that's the best time to sell. If you're unsuccessful, that's probably the best time to sell anyway, because you can get um, a nice capital event to build your wealth. Um, yeah, so I started a few businesses from scratch and uh, I then basically realized that I don't like to manage businesses. I just don't like to run the day to day and I want to own businesses versus running them. That led me to the world of, um, what I'm doing right now. And it's, and it's the world of buying businesses, buying and investing in businesses. Um, it's pretty funny because some of those ideas came from watching TV shows like Shark Tank and The Profit, which you probably heard about. I was pretty much looking at those TV shows and I'm like, I want to do that. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to be involved in as many businesses as possible. I want to bring in my expertise, my knowledge, my experience and just help them grow. And that's what we do right now. We're just looking for businesses pretty much all around the world to buy. Um, UK, US, Canada, Australia. I mean, I'm even looking at deals in Poland and Spain. And today someone sent me a deal from Colombia. So <laughs> as long as they got banks, I'm happy to look at those deals. And that's my goal. I just want to buy as many businesses as possible. And I just want to enjoy the process and learn as much as I can. That's pretty much it. Well, it's, I mean, that's fascinating. And, and it's interesting that you've, you've drawn some early inspiration from, from Shark Tank um, and, 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 and the, the, the six or seven investors that, that tend to, to, to be on that show consistently. And then Marcus Limonis, you mentioned the profit. Um, so, how how do you and, and you mentioned some of the countries where you're looking at deals? So 
uh, how how are you? What are maybe some of the the vital metrics or the key data points that you're using to evaluate whether it's a deal that fits for your portfolio or 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 if you should pass? Mm -hmm. Well, in the end of the day, because I'm not an existing huge company, it's not like I'm an existing public company. I'm not Facebook or anything like that. Um, Facebook, for example, they're only looking for strategic acquisitions, so they're looking for companies who have either synergies with them or some cross-selling opportunities. For me, it's just a matter of uh, financial decisions at the end of the day. If I could find a good deal, I don't really care what sector the deal is at. For me, a good deal would be ideally no more than five times multiples of their EBITDA, of their basically pre-tax profit. And in the end of the day, it really depend, uh, depends on the terms that you can get. Uh, my target is mostly businesses of baby boomers, so people who are looking to retire. Um, I just find out that that's that's my niche just because I like to present myself as the safe pair of hand, as someone who's going to take care of the employees, the heritage, the brand, uh, because that was something that was really important to me. When I had businesses, I know that I treated my businesses like my babies, and I know that when I was thinking about selling those businesses, I wanted someone who was going to take care of them and that's something that I wouldn't present right now to business owners that I'm talking to. Um, and that's why I'm usually looking for people who are looking to retire or, um, I guess, have some kind of motivation to sell their business. And I just give them an opportunity for a nice, clean exit so they could get a nice accounting valuation for their business. Plus, they could make sure that um, their brand, their business, their employees are going to be taken care of. Okay, so let, let's go back to uh, to the multiple, and and so let's say that <clears throat> let's say that you know our one of our onward nation listeners is is, is listening to this right now and in, in saying, oh no, wait a minute, okay, let, let's see, I did two hundred thousand dollars in EBIT um, last year. Let, let's say for you know twenty sixteen, they did two hundred thousand dollars in EBIT last year. And so what you're saying is, is depending upon, you know, maybe some other metrics and so forth, they did $200,000, you, you, a fair price, a fair acquisition price uh, to buy that business would be a million dollars, assuming that it was, you know, the right growth in industry and, and this and that, but about a million dollars is what you would look to acquire that business for. Am I tracking with you? Um, pretty much. In the end of the day, it really depends on the on the sector as well. So sure. some industries, I mean, three times would be fair. Some industries, um, five or more would be fair. But yeah, plus plus minus really depends on on I guess on the exact business, the numbers, how many years, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sure, and, and also how they're you know generating the revenue. If it's if it's from yes. you know two customers, or if it's from two hundred customers, if it's from you know where they have monthly reoccurring revenue or MRR that might be more valuable than you know maybe they're making widgets and it's in a it, it's in a volatile industry right so you have to pay attention to all of those things it's not just the EBIT right one hundred percent so like I mean you just mentioned that the fact that you have a reoccurring revenue could tremendously affect your valuation and that's why you can see so many acquisitions in the SaaS world in the software as a service sector I mean. People paying crazy amounts for those businesses just because um, they know that they're going to have pretty much um, reassured revenues for the next few years so they could pay more. Um, so, yeah, definitely. It really depends on the sector. It really depends. Also, another key factor is how much the business is dependent on the owner. So if the owners want to want to leave the business, and want to exit and the business is pretty much a one man show, the owner is taking care of everything, sales, marketing, HR um, support, then the business will be worth less uh, compared to a business that is not dependent on the owner is, and is just dependent on some kind of a system or there is a process in place that no matter what, you know, that the business can keep going. I, I, so those are some of the factors. Yeah, I, I am so glad that you mentioned that because, you know, we talk about uh, Michael Gerber's great book, uh, The E Myth and The E Myth Revisited, The E Myth Mastery, you know, m many times uh, with our great guests. And, and, and so, Onward Nation, being able to have a system like Michael so, you know, astutely articulates and illustrates in the book, you know, to where you treat your business as if it's a franchise, right? Being able to create a system that doesn't revolve around the owner, that then gives you the opportunity to get a five times EBIT multiple. But if not, well, then nobody's going to want to buy your job, right, Moron? Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Exactly. One hundred percent. Well, th- this this is going to be great. So let's let's dive in uh, into this first section that I like to call focus in preparation. Preparation because it's so true that greatness is available to all of us if we're willing to do the common things uncommonly well, which is a powerful lesson that I learned from one of my mentors, Don Yeager. So, Moran, is there maybe you can start us off with? Uh, maybe you want to call it a secret. Maybe you'd prefer to call it a, a, a time-saving technique. Is there something you can share with us that helps you focus and prepare to tackle your most vital priorities each day? Mm-hmm. That's a really good question. You know, um, in the past, I probably read every book about time management, took every course about time management, and I, I tried everything, like literally everything. I'll tell you what works really well for me right now to be productive is I have a I'm using um, just an Excel spreadsheet, literally. I have daily tasks, and I'm I'm basically separating those tasks into four categories, into health, wealth, love, and happiness. And I have um, around two, three tasks in each of those categories. Plus, I have a list of kind of like just the one thing. What's the one thing I need to focus on in my business? So in all of those four criteria, those are usually tasks um, the most of them or lots of them are not just related to business. And then I have a separate list where it's basically just I'm writing what's the one thing and I'm just writing, hey, what's the one thing I could do today? So I'll be happy with my day with my um, or, or something like what's the one thing I could do today that will lead me to my 10 years goals uh, the most. And that's pretty much what I'm doing. I, I don't really have a specific time that I start my day. I sometimes I wake up with an alarm clock. If I have early meetings or calls, sometimes I'm just waking up wherever. And as long as I'm completing my tasks in my, in my Excel spreadsheet, and as long as I'm at least putting one or two hours, and I'm talking very focused hours where you got no distractions, you're literally you with that task. And I can, uh, basically, I, I basically in the Excel spreadsheet I put a V if I did that, and then the the tab it, it, it just um, I color it in in green automatically. And if I didn't do it, um, it's going to be red. And as long as I did all those tasks every day, I'm happy with my day. I think that's excellent from a, a few different perspectives. One, um, you know, you're you're using a tool. Okay, great. But it's not an overly complicated tool. It's an Excel file. So, you know, that's something that that most people are going to be able to use and, and, and master without, you know, too much uh, difficulty. It's pretty simple. But but what I really like about that is the daily rhythm. It's like this daily scorecard that you're keeping. And, and, and so that's awesome. But then you also gave us some insight there into, into this 10-year view. So let me give that back to you to make sure I'm tracking with you 100%. So you've got a 10-year view of what you want to accomplish you know, 10 years from now, by 2027, I will have done X. And then it sounds like you're you're working that way backwards to today or to next week or to the next quarter in breaking down that 10 year into, you know, smaller rocks to check those off the list. Am, am I on the same page as you? Exactly. 100%. I think that's, that's exactly probably one of the biggest lessons I learned about, you know, all this word of uh, reality creations. I think that's probably the the biggest lesson I could I could transfer to other people is decide who you want to be and just live from that person. Just act as if you're that person already and take the actions or have the habits that that person would have. And that's why I'm asking myself that question. I'm basically asking or, or, or similar other questions. I'm just asking myself, hey, if I was that successful person or if I was already living my vision, what kind of actions would I take today? Or what would be the first thing I'll do today? Or what would be the most important thing I should do today? All those questions that are going to, um, it's basically me working from that vision of me. That's thats a powerful visualization of your future self. Like what, what, uh, it, really powerful lesson there. And and so let's, let's peel that back because like, when did you learn that? When did you start applying that? It sounds like that's been very impactful for you. Yeah. 100%. Um, and again, it all comes down to books and seminars and all that stuff. I probably read everything out there. And I think if you'd 
need to summarize all the you know all the the secret and law of attraction all, all that stuff or all the motivation stuff out there all the books all that stuff i think that's the biggest lesson you you can take is decide who you want to be and start to live from that person um I'm, i have some kind of different versions of that i'm i'm, I'm like this version is just my latest version but i'm of, of obviously i had other different versions of of my uh, productivity habits and different ways that I looked at the world. But right now I just found out this is the best way for me. And it also, um, I think another really important thing to add, to add is that I don't have the attachment to be that person, um, but I'm really trying to live from that person and to enjoy life and my day to day from that person. I think that's really important as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of pretty much it. Yeah. Wow. And, and so what, what I'm really loving about this piece that you're introducing here is, is it reminds me of, of what, you know, uh, Shelly Davidescu shared with us and and that was, that was what, what she called the power of cognitive rehearsal. And, and, and so, you know, here you're creating this amazing vision for yourself. And then, and that was back in episode 289 onward nation. And, and, and so Moran, what I, what I love about this is that you're creating this future vision of yourself and then it's not, well, wouldn't it be nice someday if, if I reach that you, you create this future vision of yourself and then you're pulling it backwards and, and, and saying to yourself consciously, I think of what I'm hearing you say is, is that what can I do today to start living like that person? And then every single day rehearsing over and over and over again in your mind so that you then tangibly begin living like that person 10 years from now person in whatever way you can today, right? Exactly. Exactly. I, I don't remember who the person I, I learned it from, but it basically said something like, um, your desire for something is the exact thing that's holding you back from that thing. Uh, because let's say, let's say you have a goal to to buy companies or to be a multimillionaire, you'd have a very different daily thought process if you'd already be that person versus if you'd be the person who's always trying to to desire and become that person. Um, we're, we're getting really esoteric here and it really deep, but I, I really, really believe in that. It's basically if you desire or you have that need to become something, you'll always have that. It's like, you know, that that sentence that says basically, if, if you're not experiencing happiness today, you're not going to be happy when you're going to achieve something. You got to be happy now and you'll keep be, it's personal, it's going to be easier to, to achieve your goals, but then you'll keep being happy. It's like the, the, the state that you have today is the state you're going to have probably in a year or two years from today, unless you're going to change things within. Yeah. And, and I think that that's really speaks to your maturity, your confidence as, you know, a business leader and owner that, that maybe you wouldn't have had, uh, when, when you were, you're younger and, and that you're really growing up into that. And, and, and so I, I think that that really shows some wisdom of, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be pursuing all of those things. I'm going to focus on me and the type of person I need to become. And eventually that stuff will come to me because I've become the type of person that is commensurate with that, that is congruent with that. So working on yourself onward nation is really the place where you need to start. Great lessons, Moran. Thank you very much for sharing that. <laughs> no worries. Well, so let's take this piece into, into daily habits. And, and and you've given us one already, essentially kind of your daily and 10-year scorecard. Love that. But, it, but is there maybe another one or two that daily habits that you feel have really contributed to your success? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go through all of my daily habits. So uh, if you want, I'll, I'll go pretty, pretty fast through them. It's basically I wake up, um, I try to always drink uh, um, lemon water. So just like some water with lemon, uh, drink some green juice, either in the powder or just create a shake. That wakes me up pretty well. Um, I like to work out in the morning. So I go and I do some kind of a workout in the gym or, or something else. And then um, I usually go back, have a breakfast, and then I work on the – have a shower, and then I work on the first – the most important thing for my day. Um, I also um, try to read at least 30 minutes a day. Plus, I, I read a lot on uh, just listening to audiobooks, so using Audible. 
so I listen to tons of those. Um, I like to announce some of my readings every day, so some kind of a declaration of my learnings, because I found out the best way to learn is by teaching. So I'm either um, sending emails or I'm writing a journal or anything like that. Um, those are the main things. I have some family stuff. I like to send um, messages or have a call with my, my key family members. Um, yeah, like I said, I like to read a journal. I like to read some kind of uh, a self-development stuff. Plus, I always read a little bit about business or so stuff that are related to my business goals. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As long as I do all those, all those things, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my day. Like as long as I've done everything in my ability to do to make this the best day possible, I'm, I'm very satisfied at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and, and what that really illustrates too is that each and every single day is an opportunity for you to move that much closer to you know the, the version of you that you see 10 years from now uh, and to make continuous progress you know toward that. Um, so, so that's great. So great start to the conversation. And so this is going to feel a little bit weird, uh, maybe abrupt, because I want to <laughs> now go 180 degrees in the complete opposite direction. And ask you to share with us that 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 challenging time, that that situation that could have devastated, maybe even ruined your business. But you persisted. You made the tough decisions. So now that once painful memory, well, maybe it's more of an invaluable learning experience. So tell us that story, Moran. Yeah. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned that back then. I, I'm going to – so I'll start with this story. The story was – I, I had a successful app company, a really successful app that was, like you said in the beginning, in the top 100 in, in more than 100 stores in the app store. Made a lot of money. And I, I already got offered to sell that business, but I didn't sell it. And a few months later, Apple came and basically, Apple came by and basically said to me that I can't upload another version of that app, which basically means that uh, I can't, I can't use that app anymore. Like I can't make any more money for that what? because Apple, yeah, pretty much. And, and the reason is that, <laughs> and the reason is that they came with their own version of that app. I used to have an app that's making, um, really simple app. Actually, we used to do tips for iPhone. So basically, you know, just like quick tips on how to use the iPhone, kind of like tricks and, uh, and um, shortcuts and stuff like that for people who are new to the iPhone. And it just shows you with screenshots and videos on how to use it. And Apple, they came up with their own version for the app that is basically a default app. I don't know if they still have it, but they had it in a, as a default app with every iPhone. And they basically said to me, sorry, we can't upload that app anymore. And I mean, I was, I was devastated, like literally so much money every day coming in. And one day, tons of employees as well. And one day, just like, gone. I can't do anything with it. And, I mean, it, it took me a while. Like, seriously, I didn't know what to do. I was at the point, I'm like, okay, what, what do I do with my life right now, right? Um, but I, I could tell you that looking backwards, um, I mean, you could say that that story and probably other, um, in quotes, horror stories in my business life were probably the best things that happened to me because they, they led me to, to the things that I'm doing right now. And I'm, I'm the most satisfied from the things I'm doing right now. Like I, I've never been so fulfilled with my day to day as much as I am right now. And I never had that back in the day. And I know that if those things didn't happen to me, I would stick to my comfort zone. Like there is no way that I would even look outside to those opportunities because I mean, if you're making money, you are living a good lifestyle, um, what else do you need? It's like, it's really hard to go and, um, go and basically look outside your comfort zone as long as everything is good. But back then I just had to look for something new. And that's what led me to, to this world of, of investing and buying businesses. And if I didn't have those, um, scenarios, there's no way that I'll be where I am right now. So, I mean, back then, I mean, I remember I was devastated, like literally devastated. But um, now I'm, I'm literally seeing those stories as, and some of the best things that happened to me. And they say that um, sometimes life um, got a uh, – what's the, the word I'm, I'm looking for? But it basically, life's going to kick your ass a little bit if you're not going to stretch yourself just because life believe or 
whoever is out there believe that you could do more. So it's going to change things in the world to, to make sure that you're going to stretch your abilities and what you're capable of. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I've heard, um, maybe you and I have heard the, a, a similar thing from, from Tony Robbins, who, 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 who has said that when you're, when you're in that point of challenge and obstacle, you know, that, that could be, now I'm not talking about physically devastating things and illnesses and, and so forth, but challenges in your business and, and really being forced to grow that those, you know, might be signs of God, you know, giving you the push in order to become the person that you need to become in order to take advantage of that next round of opportunity. And, and, and so here you had an instance of, I mean, wouldn't it be nice to be able to learn that lesson over time, as opposed to having it, you know, thrown upon you, like, you know, one day things are good. The next day you got no revenue. I mean, that's awful, but then, but then, you know, it, it sounds like, sure, maybe there's a mourning period of, oh gosh, you know, what am I going to do next? But you quickly got back to work and now you're able to look back on that and say, you know what, geez. I'm so glad that that happened because I wouldn't be where I'm at today had it not, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And you know, all those, and, and I love Tony Robbins. I mean, all those all those things that you just said, 100% believe in that. And I think those periods in life make you really appreciate um, good times. You know, I mean, whenever things are good and you you know things could be worse, I mean, man, that, that makes you really appreciate life. Well, I mean, there's it's, it's like a fundamental principle in the universe is that you can't grow without pain. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about growing a business or we're talking about being in the gym, being an exceptional athlete. I mean, Michael Phelps on Word Nation didn't just jump into the pool and start swimming world record paces. And I mean, he trained and put his body through rigor and pain and challenge. And then he moved up to a level and then he challenged himself again and then moved up to the next level and so forth. And we have to, it, it is a law of nature. It is a law of business. It is part of our human DNA that if you're going to get better at something, it's you have to put yourself under stress in order for that to happen. And Moran is just giving us a great example of how that happened in his business. And instead of sitting around saying, oh, woe is me, why is this happening? He quickly got back to work and then moved on to a brand new level that he probably could have never imagined had he not gone through that pain. So thank you for sharing, you know, such a deeply personal story with us. I mean, that was very, very kind of you, Moran. Thank you. No, no worries, for sure. So what do you think is the most critical skill that business owners need to master in order to thrive today? Wow. Um, that's a really good question. I'd say, I think it really depends on where you at with your business. Um, so I think you need a different skill if you're just starting versus if you already have something existing. Um, cause if you're just starting, I think you need to be good at sales and marketing. That's all like before, if you're not in the seven figure marks yet, that's all you need. Like just be the best at sales and marketing. After that, I think you need different skills. Um, probably things like leadership and more about understanding people. But um, yeah, I'd say to begin with, just be good at sales and marketing. If you're good, if you know how to sell, and when I'm saying selling, it, it really should come from a place of honesty, just from a place of adding value and giving to people. If you know how to do that, I, I think you you could be really successful because business in the end of the day is about adding value. And if you have something that could add value to someone else, then, I mean, by all means, you could be successful. Love it. And, and, and what I think is really great about what you shared with us there <clears throat> is how you, you gave us the benchmark that Onward Nation, if, if your revenue is currently less than a million dollars, um, then then you really need to have all of your emphasis on how are we going to drive revenue if it's above a million then as moran just mentioned is that then leadership and scaling and in all of those things you know tend to now become even more vital because the organization is getting bigger maybe the sales are getting more complex maybe they're larger contracts maybe have more risk and so forth and so you need to pay attention to different things but if it's a million dollars or less then then every single day needs to be, what am I going to sell today to bring in the revenue for me and my team, right? Yeah, 
One hundred percent. So let, let's let's now take this into into mentorship because you, you're you're giving us great mentorship as as we're learning from you and, and your path. And so let but let me flip this and and ask you to to tell us about the most influential lesson that you that you ever learned from one of your mentors, and then how that lesson helped you become the business owner you are today. <laughs> really, really good question. I guess we could have a, a, an hour long conversation just about that. Uh, because because it's a uh, I guess what, what do you prefer a business answer or uh, just a general life answer? Yeah, it, so great uh, great follow up. Um, I, I I think it's it's is really up to you as far as where yeah. the impact was the most, whether that was a business mentor or a personal mentor. So I I leave it to you. Okay, so I'll, I'll go I'll go with a, a general mentor. I think some of those things came from Tony Robbins actually. Um, I, I'd separate it into two, and I think I just I literally heard him talking about it like a few days ago, and that's the fact that. Life is about two things. One of them is um, uh, it's about accomplishing things. And the second part is about being fulfilled. It's about fulfillment. So to accomplish things and to achieve your goals, just find out what you want to be. Find out where you want to be, let's say, like we said, in 10 years and find out someone who's already there and do whatever it takes to learn from that person, to be that person, to be around that person, whatever it takes, do whatever you can to learn from someone who's all already where you want to be. And just don't give up, literally. Just go, try, fail, go, take massive action, fail, enjoy failure, and just keep going at that. Like literally, enjoy failing your way to success, but make sure you're learning from the right person, from someone who's already where you want to be. The second thing is and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm separated in it to two, but I, I think it's a must to bring them those two together is being fulfilling. Be also, uh, is about fulfillment. It's about making sure you're, um, you're enjoying in your path to that success. First of all, just because it's going to be easier to get there. If you're going to focus on today, just focus on today. What can you do today to be, to enjoy your, your day, to, to have fun with your day? What will make you excited today? If you'll focus on those things, every day and at the same time have your goal at the back of your mind i mean you'll be invisible and you'll enjoy your way and you'll also get there faster i mean you'll get much faster to your goals if you're actually starting from today by doing something that you like versus if you're just thinking hey i think it'd be cool to i don't know go to to be a banker and within you don't really care about that so i'd say really think about what you want to do but then go about finding your ways to enjoy today and being grateful today and uh, being excited today. Because if you'll be excited and you're going to, if you're going to be excited and you're going to have fun and you're going to enjoy and you're going to be grateful every day, I mean, you'll do that every day for the rest of your five, ten years. You'll still be happy in ten years, but you'll be successful as well. So I'd say just just put those two together. Be Make sure you're grateful, fulfilled today, and make sure you work on your goals and do it um, while learning from someone who's already there. That's great mentorship that you're sharing with us. And and I think you know, three three words that, that really stuck out to me that, that I think are, are pretty profound. And, it, and it's easier said than done. But but what I love about it is that I know that you believe this to your core, which is why you said it. But so I I know that you're applying it. But when you said enjoy the failure, like you have to be able to do that because it's part of getting better. So why not rejoice in the fact that you just experienced something that is going to make you better if you're smart about learning from it, right, Moran? One hundred percent. And I'll add and say, if you're not enjoying the failure. Um, I, I deep, even deeper within you. It means it probably means a lot more than that. And sometimes it means that you're just not enjoying the action that you're taking many times. I mean, if, if you think about what would you do if money was not an object or what would you do if you had billions of dollars? What would you do if your day, if, if you didn't get paid for that? And if you're going to do that, you're not really care about, you're not really going to care about if you're going to fail or be successful at that. You're just going to enjoy the process of actually doing and actually taking action. That's where you need to bring in your your fulfillment and your enjoyment from, not from achieving something. I know it's easier said than done, but in the end of the day, you're not going to be fulfilled by achieving something. 
when you're going to get the check for whatever, how many millions you're going to have there, it's going to feel good in the beginning, but then it's just going to be a check. Obviously, don't get me wrong. There, there are stats out there that says that you need at least a decent amount of income um, to, to be a, a, at least um, safe and and a little bit happy. But after a little, so I, I think they said after about seventy grand a year or something like that in personal income, more money or more things won't make you happy. If you already have food, you already have a shelter. I mean, you got more than you need. And everything else is, is just a bonus. Little, it's not going to make you more happy. Giving to others, adding value to others, doing things that you enjoy, doing things just for doing it, that's what's going to make you happy and successful at the same time. And I really, really believe in that. Yeah, that, that's that's phenomenal. And here again, you gave us another another milestone, just like you did a few minutes ago when you mentioned the million dollar, the seven figure level in anything under seven, or excuse me, anything under the million that the vital priority needs to be sales work. I mean, work on sales every single day. And here, you just gave us another one of $70,000 that that anything above that, does that feel good? Sure. But does it buy you? Does it buy you more happiness? No, it it doesn't on Word Nation. And, and I also, I just, I just love, Moran, how you're, how you're helping us and really pushing us to paint the picture of the future in that, deciding whatever that is and then going and pursuing or not pursuing going and becoming that person in order to to make that manifest itself and it reminded me of your the the story i saw an interview from gosh it's probably 10 years old or, or more probably 15 years old now but when oprah winfrey interviewed jim carrey and when and when jim was you know part of the um Gosh, what show was it? In Living Color, I think he was just getting started on that show in the late 80s, early 90s as one of their characters. And he had written a check to himself for $10 million and put it in his wallet and said, someday I'm going to get paid $10 million. And it was a constant reminder. And then 10 years later is when he was signed as the lead role for the movie The Mask. And his in his compensation for that movie was ten million dollars amazing yeah <laughs> because he he had he was doing what you're encouraging what you're teaching us to do right now think 10 years down the road and then think about what you need to do today on word nation in order to make a piece of that dream manifest itself which is why i'm so excited about the lessons that you're giving us today moron because it happens on word nation it happens but it you is. have to make it happen, right? I mean, Jim Carrey didn't just like magically wake up one day and he had $10 million in his wallet. I mean, he... <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's really important. I really like that you're saying that. I think it's really, really important to emphasize because, I mean, people, I see a lot of people talk about books lately and there's nothing wrong about reading books, but you need to understand um, you can read hundreds of books about, uh, let's say, about how to drive a car but you're going to learn more about driving a car by driving a car for 10 minutes. So taking action and really executing, doing the actual work is what's going to get you results. Reading more books, it's not going to get you more results. It's going to get you more knowledge, but there's a very big difference between having more knowledge and more results. I think it's really important to always learn and always grow. I think it's a must, but I think... Many people think that by reading another book, they think that they move forward with, uh, they think that they execute towards their goals. And they're not. By doing sales calls, by building marketing systems, by building um, funnels, bringing all, all the things that we talked about. I mean, obviously, there's tons of things that we can talk about in sales and marketing. But but doing the actual work of sales and marketing, you're going to get sales, you're going to get revenues, and you're going to get results that way. You cannot get sales by reading another book. Obviously, you can sharpen your skill by reading the books about sales, but the actual sale got to come from actually doing the work. And I think it's really, really important to emphasize. Yes, I'm talking a lot about, um, I guess, visioning and, and acting as if, but the only reason that I'm doing that is because I'm taking so much action, like so much action that I need to talk about some of those things to balance myself a little bit. 
But I know for many, many people, it's the opposite way around. They need to take much more action versus just reading or thinking or whatever, imagining stuff. So just I just want to emphasize that. I think it's really important. That, that is, that, that's excellent. And that's a great emphasis there on how important it is to learn and then apply. Learn and then quickly apply. Um, and in, in Darren Hardy, a former publisher of Success Magazine, one of my mentors, you know, said to me, you know, instead of reading 32 books this year, read one book 32 times. And in, in really taking it deep in that content, but, but then also developing mastery around that content. So go learn something new on Word Nation and then apply it over and over and over and over again to develop mastery and then move on to something else in order to broaden and deepen your skills. That's awesome. But but apply, learn and apply, which, which is such a great lesson, Moran. So thank you very much for for emphasizing that. So as we come in for a landing here, because I, I know that we're you know quickly running out of time, and and I, I just before I ask you my, my my last question, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you, and you know, in in and seriously, thank you for spending some of your evening with me and Onward Nation. I I, I don't make light of that. You're seven time zones ahead of me. You're in Tel Aviv <laughs> and I'm in, you know, the States. And, and I greatly appreciate the commitment to to doing that. So thank you. And thank you for coming on to the show and in and, and just in opening yourself up and being so transparent and genuine and generous with your uh, experiences and the wisdom and how you've applied it and the mistakes you've made, but then how you learn from that quickly without, oh, woe is me and how you applied it to grow. Thank you so much, Moran. It's just a fantastic conversation. No worries. Thank you very much for for having me and, and still having me. I'm, I'm I'm really I had and I'm still having a really great time. Well, it's it's been it's been an honor to have you here. So here here's my my last question for you. So imagine you're standing in front of a room of brand new business owners, people just like you when you were starting out and. So maybe they're battling their way through fear. Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's doubt and struggle. And they're just trying to find their footing. What would be two or three strategies you would recommend that they focus on to best ensure success? Ooh, um, really, really great question. Um, and I, I guess I'm a little biased, uh, but um, I know that I wish that I knew some of the things that I know today. And some of those things are things like the fact that I can buy an existing business that's already making profit, that's already making um, sometimes more than seven figures in revenues, and I can buy that business even if I don't have a capital, personal capital. Um, I'd say that I wish I knew that, and it, it's really important to me to say that because I know that just m most people that I know don't know it's even possible. So I'd say if that's one thing, and there's nothing wrong about starting a startup, but you need to know what you're facing. And I have tons of friends who are angel investors, who are, uh, they got their own uh, VC firm or private equity firm. And those investors, when they invest in startup, they know that nine out of 10 startups are gonna fail. But for them, they, they don't care because they know that even if one's gonna be successful, they're gonna make enough money for all of their losses. But what I'm saying is, why would you want to be on the other side of that, of that fence, basically, to basically be the one who's struggling to be that one successful company? Um, I'm just having a really hard time to see people sometimes waste all of their savings, all of their family savings on an idea that sometimes they, they're not even passionate about. Many times people are getting into this, this world of business because they care about their lifestyle and they care about the income. And if that's what you care about, I think there are, there are better ways, to be honest. So I'd say that's that's the first thing. Just know that it's it's an option to buy an existing business and in any industry. And you could take your idea for a startup and just go for an existing business that's already in that sector, buy that business, and you'll already have a list of clients, a track record, a brand recognition, some some cash flow to play with that even if you have new ideas, you could bring those ideas into your existing business. Um, I'd say that's the biggest thing, to be honest. And then I'll, I'll go back and, and talk more about some of the things we, we said before, is that if you're not making enough money, focus on sales and marketing. 
um, it's pretty straightforward. If you're not making money, you need to go out there, call people, create marketing campaigns. There's tons of options out there. Make sure you're having conversations with potential clients. If you don't do that, you can expect to have um, any type of revenues coming in. So I'd say those two. I think those two are real, really important for me to say because I know I wish I knew some of those things when I started. And, and and thank you for again emphasizing the sales piece. And and the reason being is because I often spend time with business owners who are looking to try and scale their business, grow their business, <clears throat> and and we need to focus on systems, of course. And we talked about EBIT, right? If we're going to sell our business, it has to be in that kind of franchise model. The business owner can't be, you know, the linchpin to everything and there needs to be a good system. So having systems in place, business systems in place to allow for scalability, all of that makes sense. But unless you have a dependable, repeatable, predictable revenue stream that you have built it doesn't matter how great of a system you have or the documentation or or you know, the training manuals and all of that. If you don't have a great, predictable, repeatable, measurable sales system in place, none of it matters because you'll go out of business. So I'm really, really thankful that, Moran, that you have you know, reemphasized that because it is so critical to a business owner's success. Wow. Well, b- before we go, before we close out and say goodbye, please do tell us the best way to connect with you, my friend. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty easy to connect with. Just literally feel free to email me. Um, my personal email is moran, M-O-R-A-N, at um, my company's website. It's at abdassets.com. If you have questions, I know many people ask me about how they can get into this world of buying businesses. So um, I... I I'm not sure about the best way, but I can tell you that I'm happy to basically give equity for people who can help me find businesses to buy and invest in. So if you want to help me with that, I'm happy to give you equity in deals. And at the same time, you could you could basically watch me while I do deals and how I do them. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, thank you very much for taking time again out of your schedule. Come on the show. We all have the same 86,400 seconds in a day. And and I'm grateful for your mentorship, the instruction, the experience sharing, so that we could all move our businesses onward to that next level when we apply what we learned here from you today. Thank you so much, my friend. No worries at all. I had a really great time. Thank you very, very much for having me. This episode is complete, so head over to OnwardNation.com for show notes and more food to fuel your ambition. Continue to find your recipe for success here at Onward Nation.